okay, stay calm, try not to lose it. It's only horror. It's, it's really just 31 days of October. No big deal. You can do this. 31 days of October! Welcome to 31 Days of October 2016, week one. We are finally here. I have been harping this for the last probably three months now. I am so excited. I can't wait to discuss the horror movies that I and some friends have been watching uh, over the course of October. Now, first off, I'm gonna say I have so many great guests uh, planned out for every week of this, uh, and I can't thank those guys enough. You guys have really just supported me, supported my channel, and you're all great friends, and let's have fun with this. Also, if you're not on Letterboxd, remedy that right now. Get on Letterboxd, uh, you can follow me, I will follow you back, and you will be able to see what I am watching day to day, and I'll be able to see what you're watching day to day. This is gonna be a huge interactive event. It's a great way for us to share our horror viewings with each other, and give each other ideas. That's really the whole point of this. It's a community. Third, if you haven't jumped on Killer Flicks yet and become a member, definitely do that. That's also just an extension of this. We are talking about horror every day. Not just October, but during October, right now we're really excited and we're talking about all the movies that we're watching every day for this month. And you can tell I am super pumped right now. I really didn't even need this, but I have to have it because I'm talking. Okay, before I get started, let me introduce my guests. I got three of them for you. I got Emma from Spooky Astronauts. I have Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain. And I also have Joe from Be Kind Rewind Reviews. This is gonna be a long video, as you can tell. And it's gonna be so much fun. First off, we're gonna start with Emma from Spooky Astronauts. She has such an awesome channel. She just keeps growing and growing. And that's because she puts out a lot of great horror content. Uh, and if you notice, if you go over to her channel, make sure you subscribe because she's actually reviewing a movie every day in October. She's gonna tell you what she's watching with a single video every day. If you do this, you know how hard that is. It takes time to put these videos together. So I have to give her props for that. So anyway, take it away, Emma. Hi Lee, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I really love your channel and I think that you're such a good personality on YouTube so I'm very honored to be a part of this video, especially celebrating October, the month of Halloween and horror. So let's just get into it. I'm gonna talk about a few movies I watched this week. Uh, number one was not a good movie. It was Most Likely to Die, which is on Netflix. It is an American slasher film that is about stereotypes. The film revolves around a group of friends getting back together after 10 years for their high school reunion um, and then people start dying. The film is not very original, it's not really a great storyline, it's cheesy as hell and it also has really low budget which it's okay sometimes, but this film, not so much. The next film I watched was Abattoir. Uh, also, sorry to say, not a good film. The film is based around the mystery of these rooms that different murders have taken place in, um, disappearing, and what happens is pretty much a guy is putting them all together to make this giant house of bad vibes. Uh, the thing that really killed me in this one was the storyline, although that was how they should have explained it. It was very complex, and they tried to add a lot of different subplots to it, and it was just it's too confusing. They should have kept it really basic. And the two main characters, I don't know what was wrong with them. They were trying to do like a film noir type thing and they kept them really stylized while everyone else was like normal 21st century. So I wasn't really down with that one. Great concept and they kind of butchered it. Finally onto some good films I have watched. I watched Rufus and this film is great. It's a vampire type tale about a guy who goes to a small town and um, he's got some mystery about him. I don't really know what to say about this film without giving away too much. It's kind of like Let Me In meets uh, Interview with a Vampire in a certain way. I thought it was really clever, really cool and sometimes it's nice to see a vampire flick every now and then that's not so showy and all about vampires partying and all like a crazy love story. This film had that right balance, really good characters, really nice scenery. The small town where it was set looked really pretty and I really liked it. Great characters and I definitely encourage you guys to watch this one. 
the last film I watched was actually another film you can find on Netflix. It's called Stitches, and it has Ross Noble appearing as a clown. And I had seen this film around, and I think there was a lot of talk about this film when um, Eli Roth's Clown came out, um, the movie that he produced. But this one is very different, and it's more of a comedy horror. I really didn't think I'd like this film, but I thought it was really cool. It had some subtle jokes. It was more like the in-betweeners meets a clown. It wasn't very like stereotypical. It was kind of made fun of itself and I really liked that about this film. I thought it was really cool and I definitely encourage you guys to watch it and add it to your October list. And that's all I watched this week. Thank you so much Lee for having me on your channel. Back over to you. Next up we got my good friend Zach from Zach vs. the Blu-ray Mountain. Uh, his channel has been going for a few months. He has really put out some great content and he also has these from the shelf reviews that he does uh, and he will take something from his DVD shelf and he'll talk about it and he does a lot of classic movies too he doesn't just do new releases if you watch my channel you know that's how I do things I don't like doing just new releases I like doing classics also Zach just started up uh, a podcast with Tim from the late reviews called Metal Claw and it's where they talk all things metal just last week they did a podcast on the Metallica discography. Really good listen, so definitely check that out. So, anyway, take it away, Zach. Hey guys, and welcome to the Blu ray Mountain. Hey guys, it's uh, Zach from Zach vs. the Blu ray Mountain, and I'm happy to be one of the first guests in Lee from Drum Dumb's 31 Days of October. It actually turned out that I'm one of the first guests, so I haven't actually been watching any movies in October yet. I've been watching a lot of movies here at the end of September, even though this video is going to go live October 2nd. Near the end of September is when I start like really getting into that horror mood. I start watching some of my eh, okay favorite horror movies, because I try to save some of the ones that I really love for October. Some of the films that I've seen this year so far have been Slither, a really, really underrated zombie type film. Michael Rooker is on point. Nathan Fillion is pretty badass in the movie. And well, Elizabeth Banks, you can't go wrong there. To go on from that, I watched The Ward in Urban Legend from my From the Shelf review series. Urban Legend is a 90s classic. Came out around the same time as this guy right here, uh, Ghostface from Scream. Um, but Urban Legend stands on its own. Uh, if you haven't seen those reviews, head over there and check that out. Spooky Astronauts, Emma, I have to thank you for this one. Uh, kind of got me into the classic uh, Universal Monster movies. I picked up a lot of them from Walmart right now with those awesome slipcovers. The other night I watched The Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's uh, one of my favorites from back in the day. And it's a pretty good movie. I feel bad about not showing you some of the movies that I do watch in October. So I'm going to run down a list of movies that I watch every October. Scream, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Friday the 13th, the remake. I know, I know it gets a lot of hate, but I actually kind of like this one. My Bloody Valentine 3D. Rob Zombie's Halloween remake. The Ryan Reynolds Amityville Horror remake. Friday the 13th Part 2, Freddy vs. Jason, Trick or Treat, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake, finally the Hatchet Trilogy, and there's a couple of reasons why I watch these. So guys, this has been Zack vs. the Blu-ray Mountain. If you liked what I watched in September and the movies that I'm going to watch here in October, you let me know down in the comments down below. Thanks again, Lee, for putting me in this video. It means a lot to me, man. And I can't wait to talk about horror movies next Halloween. Stay metal, my friends. Okay, my final guest is Joe from Be Kind Rewind Reviews. Talk about a professional. Joe is a really good friend. He loves movies. He is highly intelligent on the subject of movies. And definitely check out his channel. You're going to get a kick out of all the great content he has on there. So anyway, take it away, Joe. Hey there guys, it's Joe from Be Kind Rewind Reviews, formerly known as Movie Nights Reviews, and first I want to give a humongous thank you to Lee for having me on this episode of 31 Days of October. I'm really glad to be a part of it, and I am really glad to be making some sort of video again, even if it is for another channel. And with that out of the way, let's begin listing what I watched this week. So when it comes to watching horror movies leading up to Halloween, I really like to start off slow. I mean, that's kind of appropriate 
appropriate, saying how some of the great horror movies like to have a lot of build-up, you know? But what I also mean by that is that I like to save the really scary movies for the last weekend of October. Except for Gremlins, because Halloween night is closer to Christmas than late September or early October. So that means movies like Ghostbusters and Beetlejuice would start the month off, and I would end with my favorite horror movie ever made, The Thing. With that information in mind, starting us off is the ever-growing cult classic, Monster Squad. Now I'm not gonna lie, as I get older from the naive high school freshman who saw this for the first time back then, seriously back then, like Terminator Salvation was one of my favorite movies ever. I didn't really know much about movies back then. The plot for this movie does not make a lick of sense. There's just certain things that don't add up and are pretty convoluted to say the least. But Damn, is this movie fun. It's a fun premise where you have these classic movie monsters coming together and these kids have to fight them off. You like the kids even if they're pretty much every single 80s kid stereotype. And the dialogue for this movie is absolutely hilarious and it might contain one of my favorite so goofy, it's amazing, and hilarious lines ever written for a movie right next to another movie that's on this list. And it is the most famous line from Monster Squad. Say it with me now, Wolfman's got nards! My neighbors are probably wondering what the hell I am even saying in here right now. <laughs> Continuing on to Tuesday, I was able to have a double feature, seeing how I only have one class in the morning on Tuesdays. So for the first few hours after class, I picked two movies that inspired a script that I am currently working on, and they both have the theme of a gooey blob-based monster. That is, the Blob, and The Stuff. But I really like both of these movies, even though The Blob is vastly superior than The Stuff. It has better editing, better acting, and even though they're pretty much on par in terms of special effects, The Blob does it better. Plus, you've got 50s legend Steve McQueen. The actor, not the director who's currently working today and is probably one of the best working directors today. But to the credit of the stuff, though, it does have some unique satire thrown into the story about consumerism. And despite the acting not being the greatest, as well as the visual effects, it does get a couple of good scares and laughs out of you. I love both these movies nonetheless, so if you've not seen them, I highly recommend them. Then afterwards, I decided to watch one more movie after dinner and a bit of homework, and I put in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Sweet Jesus, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I, in all honesty, don't have much else to say about this movie that hasn't already been said. You know it's campy. You know some of the crazy shit that happens in this film. If you haven't seen it, I won't say anything about it other than you need to see it to believe it. Check it out now. Wednesday's pick goes to Reanimator. Yeah, my picks are a little silly, aren't they? But Reanimator was one of those movies that I only just watched this year, and I'm quite surprised that I've never seen this movie beforehand because, while yes, it is really ridiculous, remember, this is a movie where a severed head tries to give head to a woman. It is a legitimately good movie. Not a great movie by any stretch, it's not flawless, but it is better than what most B movies really are. The characters are likable, and it's got a good pace and tone throughout, and I really enjoy what they got away with in terms of special effects. That being said, this movie is goofy. Not on a line of like a Sam Raimi or a Peter Jackson line of goofy. Actually, now that I think about it, I am adding Dead Alive to my next week's list. Shoot, I almost forgot about that. Dead Alive, go watch that. That's that's a fun watch. But yeah, Reanimator is pretty friggin' goofy, and there's nothing wrong with that either. So, Check it out if you want some good goof. Thursday, I ended up watching Oculus, a movie that I only wanted to watch because if you saw my last video, you'll know why I say this. Karen Gillan is in it. God, that Jumanji movie is going to be really good now, isn't it? What I never realized when I first watched it, however, is that this is actually a very well-written, directed, acted, and paced movie. There's also a lot of great tension being built throughout this movie. It doesn't rely heavily on jump scares and relies mainly on the atmosphere and the deterioration of everyone's sanity. It was a huge surprise to see how good this movie was since I bought the Blu-ray without seeing it before, and I wonder how this movie is going to be viewed upon in the following years because it is kind of growing a significant following but not a lot of people liked it upon release actually for some reason also karen gillen 
Can't go wrong with that. Friday, I went with a Del Toro film, and I went with his most recent film, Crimson Peak, which I feel is quite underrated. The set design for this movie got snubbed at the Oscars this last year because damn this movie is impressive in terms of its set design. You easily get lost in it all, it is a very good mystery to solve that involves ghosts, it is performed excellently except for Charlie Hunnam who was okay in the movie. I actually urge people to go give this movie a chance because it underperformed at the box office and I think people will be pleasantly surprised if they watch it. Saturday I watched a horror comedy and a superhero horror film and I went with Shaun of the Dead and Blade. Now Shaun of the Dead and I have a bit of a history. A while back I watched the movie during this huge fight with an ex-girlfriend of mine which did eventually lead to a breakup so for the longest time I was never able to watch this movie the same way since that night especially since the fight between me and my ex ended after Shaun's girlfriend dumped him so that was a little bit traumatizing. Having rewatched it not that long ago however I really really like this movie. It's got great fast-paced humor with visual gags that if you blink you will miss them, witty dialogue and fun performances from the cast. I can't believe I couldn't watch this movie for the longest time because of a stupid fight. That's ridiculous. And as far as Blade is concerned, I can agree that this movie is very underrated in terms of mainstream horror movies. Now granted, the soundtrack, costumes, and visual effects do not hold up in the slightest, but the movie isn't an origin story, it has a very well-established universe, Wesley Snipes is a likable lead, and you've got terrific performances from the supporting cast, and they're also pretty well written actually. Plus it contains that amazing line that's better than the Wolfman's Got Nards line and that is some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. I love that line so much it's so ridiculous. And for my Sunday film I decided to go with a classic. Ghostbusters. Who doesn't love this movie? There isn't really much for me to say about this movie that hasn't already been said, especially in the past year since there's been controversy surrounding the remake. It's fun, it's funny, it's got great visual effects. If you've not seen it, you're crazy. However, one thing I do want to mention is that all throughout my week, I did watch at least one or two episodes of The X-Files every single day. I love sci-fi, I love horror, and this is a show that blends both sci-fi and horror seamlessly, and it has one of the most memorable on-screen duos ever in David Duchovny's Mulder and Gillian Anderson's Scully. If you were a fan of Stranger Things, which I happen to be writing a series of reviews on currently at the moment, you will definitely love this show. But yeah, that's all that I watched this week, and I want to once again thank Lee for having me on his show, and I can't wait to continue on with my own 31 Days of October next week, with films like The Evil Dead, Kronos, Tales from Halloween, and God's Not Dead 2! <laughs> Have you seen the fan base for that movie? Pretty creepy. If you really liked what I had to say, please be sure to check out my channel Be Kind Rewind Reviews here on YouTube. That's all I've got to say. Thank you for your time, and as always, please remember to be kind and rewind. Okay, I, before I get into what I watched this week, I want to take a moment to thank my guests, uh, Emma, Zach, and Joe. Thank you so much for jumping in and helping me out on this. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what I watched over the last few days. Really September, because uh, we've only had a couple of days of October so far, so I wanted to add a few in there. I have done full reviews on many, if not most of these, so I'm just going to scratch the surface on this. Just really tell you what I watched and my quick thoughts. So first off, I watched The Blair Witch, uh, really the sequel to The Blair Witch Project that just came out. Uh, I know it got a lot of uh, flack. A lot of people don't like this movie. I happened to really enjoy it. I had a blast with it, actually. But I really loved the third act of this movie. I thought it was so tension-filled. When they go in that house, I thought I was going to pull the armrest out of my theater chair. Next up, another controversial movie, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, I recently reviewed this one, but yeah, I have a blast with Texas Chainsaw 3D. Every time I watch it, I like it even more. And I know it's one of those movies that a lot of people just hate. They pick it apart. but. Uh, it's one of those movies, and I think everybody has one of these movies, that they just don't really get why everybody hates so much. Like I said, I have a blast with Texas Chainsaw 3D. So much fun. My next movie was the actual Blair Witch Project. I watched this on VHS, 
and that just really added to the experience of it. I hadn't watched this movie in years and years, probably maybe a good 10, 15 years. So it was really neat to go back and revisit it. And it really is a groundbreaking horror movie. One of the first of its kind. And to me, it's still one of the best of its kind. So just a few days ago, I finally got to watch The Neon Demon. That movie just really blew my socks off. There are some scenes in this movie that took me off guard, did not expect at all. And again, Nicholas Winding Refn just pushes the envelope constantly in his movies. I really enjoyed this one. And I really thought Gina Malone stole the show in this movie. She was excellent and really I think she should be bigger than she is. So usually the first week of October, I like to start it out with a Halloween movie. And for this one, I did uh, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Halloween 6 is one of my most watched movies out of the whole franchise. I constantly go back to this one. But for this viewing, I actually created my own cut of it. I combined elements from the producer's cut and the theatrical cut. Really, I'd say most of it is a theatrical cut, but I threw in a lot of those character beats uh, from the producer's cut. So it is a longer version. And it's really the version that I have always wanted of the movie. It still has the pulse pounding tension of the theatrical cut, especially the third act. Really, I took out that whole third act of the producer's cut, which I am not a fan of. Finally, my last movie for this week is gonna be Children of the Corn, another movie I haven't watched in ages. Uh, it's got a young Linda Hamilton in it, actually. I'm a big fan of Linda Hamilton. And it's a Stephen King adaptation. Stephen King just, the guy's mind is just insane. The, the stories that he comes up with. And the story in Children of the Corn, to me, is so interesting. You know, this religious cult of kids, they take over this whole town. They kill off all the adults. And especially the actors that played Malachi and Isaac are, they really drive this movie. If you had child actors in this movie that couldn't act, it, it would not work at all. But they really are the reason why this movie works so well. Outlander! All right, guys, that's it. That is week one of 31 Days of October. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to the rest of the weeks. And it just so happens that uh, Halloween falls on a Monday, so my last episode will fall on Halloween Day. And make sure you subscribe to Emma from Spooky Astronauts, to Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain, and to Joe from Be Kind Rewind Reviews. So anyway, guys, that's it. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd, and drum dumb out.